Okay, extend your legs out. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, sit sit forward in the chair. So. Yeah. You wanna you wanna find where your legs fall, right? So right where that joint is. Right, and then right, so we do this to right, we're you know, ultimately we're trying to loosen and open up all the joints, but this is gonna really really reveal where all the tension is. So you wanna just lay your feet all the way out, all the way out, right? Relax the ankles, check, are, are you pulling the feet up or are you really relaxing them? And then you look at the knees, if the knees are coming up, push the knees down gently. Yeah? And not, not with your hands, but just, you know, just that stretch, push your knees down and then let it go yeah, from there. And then relax the hip, you just want your legs to fall. So, yes, yeah, so you can extend, no, yeah. So, yeah, full extension from there and then relax. Yeah. So then you see how the knees are up yes. a little bit. So, so you just, yeah, yeah, push the knees back. Push the knees back. Yeah, so with your own legs. <laughs> yeah, stretch, push the knees down. Yeah, with your own. Yeah. So you stretch the back of the knees. Right? And, and it just shows you, right, that tension. If, if the legs are all the way out, like if um, apologize for doing this now, <laughs> but if I put my oh, I can't even do it. If I put my leg up here, and I could just totally relax, right? It should straighten out. But right, if I totally let go, it should straighten out. But if the knee is like this, either I'm pulling it up or the muscle is so short, right, that I can't stretch it out. So what I'm trying to do is just lay the whole leg out, right? I want that knee down. If it's not down, then I want to stretch it, stretch it down and then release. And a lot of time while we're doing this, we're holding this foot like this, or at least I am. Yeah, I have this. I realized over the years I have this habit, even in my um, the martial arts training, just the way we used to do things, I would have this habit of pulling this foot up. Right? So in a form that maybe that's what I want. But other times I want it to be relaxed. Right? I'm just holding that tension too much. So by sitting right where the leg falls, right? if I sit too far back, it's holding the leg up. And so if I sit right where the leg falls and relax and then press that knee down and check am I relaxing, I can feel, I can feel I'm holding that light tension up. It's just an automatic habit. So I have to consciously let, let the foot fall. Okay. And then listen to my hips, sit straight. And am I holding the hips up? Am I tensing? Right. So this is where I talk about if, if you sit on the wall and your legs are dangling, Right? Or you sit on a high swing and your legs are dangling or a bar stool. A lot of times this starts to get tired, right? And we're constantly adjusting like this because we're not really relaxing and just let every, everything fall. So you want to be like that string. You take a string, put a weight on the bottom of the string and you just hang that string down with that weight. Right? And you come back the next day, it should be a little bit longer. Every day should be a little bit longer, a little bit longer. You might not see it, but if you take the measure, right, or if you put something underneath, you'll notice the next day it's like, oh, it's kind of leaning. Oh, I have to lower it, lower it, lower it, right? So you just hold the legs like this, right, and, and then watch and let it fall. So if these chairs are too high, you find something at home where, um, or, or you can prop, put something under, right? But yeah, if you feel it getting tired, that tells you, oh, this muscle is tight. So mine is already tired because <laughs> it's so tight. So you have to, this kind of exercise, you just have to let it stretch and stretch and stretch until you get used to it. And then if you drive car, it's sitting like, th sitting like this, it right, should actually start to feel more relaxed because you become more aware that you're not tensing up and you're not doing that but you can just relax the leg, yeah? From here, if, you know, I drive, I drive standards, I have clutch, so my, you know, my foot is a little bit alert, 
But if you drive automatic, then you could just extend that leg out. Okay. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to advocate doing this too much in the car if it's automatic because if you get into car accident, right, you don't want to jam, jam that. So it should have a little bit. But it should feel more relaxed. Okay. So if you're at home watching TV, right, or even eating dinner, or you're just talking or doing something where you're sitting, you, know, you try this. Let's see, you're exercising, you're doing this exercise, this stretching exercise while you're doing other things, just teaching yourself to let go of the joints. Okay, so within the, within the Tai Chi and the internal Kung Fu, right, relaxing is number one, right? Heart is number one. But with the relaxing comes the Sung, of opening and loosening up the joints. So you have to stretch all these joints and especially this joint here we have to stretch the okay, same thing with here it has to come out we have to stretch these joints from here okay. um, and then just to review what i've been taught focusing on the last several weeks right i said so relaxing soon number one right that's the physical side but on the energetic side and even the mental emotional side, heart is number one. Right? So you project from the heart. So every time we do that brush knee, right, it's that hand comes down, right? That repulse monkey, the hand comes down washing, and then it lets it go. So so you come here, don't stop it. it comes down, you just let it go, relax, right? Like you like you're flushing. Right? And then this finger comes out. And imagine you tapping the heart, right? Tapping the person's heart. And so if you remember last week, as soon as we really focused on heart, everybody's hands came down here, right? They weren't up here. Everybody realized, oh, heart, 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 right? Have to be here. So you listen to the person's heart and you feel it. And then you palm the heart, right? And you lift the sternum and then you project your heart outwards, right? So you're always smiling in at your heart. You're always smiling outwards from your heart. You use the sun chikung. Right? You have that small little sun, warm and cool, powered by the sun in the sky, putting out energy. Right? You just learn to emphasize heart, heart, heart energy. And after a while, every time you think of heart energy and you emphasize that, over here is going to get a little ticklish, right in the sternum. Yeah, and then you know something's activating. Yeah, you just think about it. You don't think about it like, oh, you don't feel anything. But as soon as you start thinking, you know, heart, even if you do this, but you don't think of heart, you don't really get that ticklish feeling. But when you put all of that together, that visualization, you get to start to get that ticklish feeling. So you know that energy is coming out there. So that heart energy is overwhelming over everything else. Right? So every time, so every time we do the repulse monkey brush knee, right? It's flushing, cleaning, feeling that person, palming, and then the healing coming out. Yeah. The same move can turn it into self-defense move. The same exact mechanics, but the intent is different. One you feeling to heal, the other you feeling to pop the balloon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, gonna, you're gonna damage the heart, explode the heart. The other, you're healing the heart with your heart. Yeah. And actually, both can project from the heart, but it's just what you do with that heart energy. Yeah. From there. But if if it's anger, then it's not going to come from the heart. It's going to come from a different organ. Yeah. It can come from liver. Your yeah, liver gonna get hot. And this this is liver. Tip of the middle finger is actually liver. So when you change it to heart, that's like transformation, right? Even though even though this is liver, liver element and liver organ and anger, right? You transforming and you changing you changing it. Instead of listening for anger, right, you're listening for something else from there. Okay. <coughs> So even this time, right, while we're talking, if you let the legs just fall, right, it's going to, it's going to give up after a while. So that's why these kind of exercises, they're just long, you have to be patient, right? If, if you give up, oh, you got to start again, right? It never released, you got to start from one, 
we got to reset the clock. When we learned this Qigong in China, he said, you know, you got to practice this every day. Every day you miss the practice, that's like going back 10 days. It takes you 10 days to get back to where you were like, oh. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you practice five times a day. Oh, you missed today. 10 days. Go back. Yeah. They said consistency, yeah. So in some ways, if you only practice once a week, if you're consistent practicing once a week, that's steady, yeah. If you practice twice a week, you always practice twice a week, that's steady. Yeah. It just takes a little longer, but it's steady. Yeah. Okay. So while we do our warm up, you leave the leg extended, leave it stretched, make sure that yeah, loosen up the ankles, sit straight, and then come up. Yeah. And just let the legs fall, let the hips open up, let the pelvic joints open up, still flushing through the legs into the earth. Breathing in, through the top of the head, through the body, through the hips, the legs. Yeah. Every time I come and I flush through the legs, I can feel myself as automatically extending the legs Letting the hips open up, letting all the joints open up. <sighs> Breathe in from the earth. The same thing, pulling the chi up through the legs. Through the back, over the top of the head, down the front of the body, back into the earth. Relaxing all the joints. Starting to visualize that energy and the blood flowing inside of the bones, stimulate the bone marrow. Blood production, bone production. One more time. Come up from the side. Hey, look way out to the horizon. Not too high, just height of shoulder is enough. Breathing in. And just imagine you're staring way out the whole time, you're scanning the horizon. Just stretching the fingertips. Deep breath, squeeze, press, exhale through all the muscle tissue in your body. And focus in the bones. You're going to pack all that blood and chi through the bones and squeeze and twist, squeezing it out of the bones and wrapping and twisting the ligaments and tendons. Bring everything back to center. Okay. So if you feel it getting tired, re resist, resist the urge to reset your feet. You're feeling it getting tired, you just have to kind of, just have to force yourself to relax, let it go. Right? And then eventually you'll start to open up. Right? But you feel it tired and like, oh, I can't take it anymore. Oh, you got to start back at zero. But if you waited one more minute, oh, you get that much more benefit, yeah? One more minute, okay. So then the other thing I've been starting to emphasize, right, when we, when we, oh, to oh, opening our palms, right? We want our fingers open, we want to make it nice and large. And first we start by just stretching, right? And then you, you want to feel the muscle from inside, you're stretching, expanding. So you're pulling and pulling and stretching all the muscles, all the fingers, right? So you get that nice large palm and then you have to relax all the joints and only focus in the palm. But while it's stretched, you change that visualization to not pushing the muscles out, not stretching from the inside, but you imagine you have cables right, on each finger and those cables are pulling so you put your mind right on the fingertip and you imagine them being pulled out 
And when you imagine this being pulled out, right, you start to feel only over here. So you let go of everything else. Right? So first it's like, oh, just expand and stretch and then sink and, and you pull from the inside, stretch from the inside. But then you think only the fingertips being pulled and everything else starts to let go. So first I'm thinking, oh yeah, only the hands, right? I'm just thinking the hands, but why not the feet? Okay, so you bring the feet back in. <coughs> and for rooting, <coughs> right? so basically I'm taking you through my whole process as I'm learning, so as, as I'm discovering things, I'm sharing it with you. So you're seeing this, this process of refining, 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 yeah? So first, right, we press into the earth, right? You push your legs into the earth and then you relax. And then inside the muscles, you feel the muscles expanding and the toes down. And then you relax the very bottom of the feet. So, but you're pressing, right? But it didn't make, I didn't think of the feet first because I'm only thinking of the fingertips. So then I'd have to think of the toes. So that means the heels would have to be up drilling into the ground, right? So I'm thinking of it wrong. It's the same thing, right? It's being pulled. So you imagine, right? You relax, you're pressing into the earth. You imagine your energy sinking into the earth. That's rooting, right? Not, not tense, tense, but just sinking and sinking. But then you imagine your, the bottom of your feet being pulled into the earth. So imagine like there's a big vacuum hose on the bottom of your teeth, right? On the bottom of your teeth, bottom of your feet. Oh, I don't know where that came from. Bottom of your feet. And your feet and legs are being sucked into the ground. That's a different feeling. Yeah, so you try that again. You think about that, right? It's been, it's, it's like something pulling. So you're not doing anything. You're just resting. But this, this suction is just pulling your feet into the earth. Right? So, so you reset it. And then you gently press, press your feet down, press the toes down, let go of the joints, right? And then press, 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 and you hold that so you can feel your feet pressing and think of them sinking. And then you change it to, it's being pulled and sucked into the earth. So if it's being pulled and sucked, then you just let go of everything, right? The more you let go, the more it's going to be drawn into the earth. Yeah, so it's a different feeling. So going back to what's important soon is number one. Relaxing is number one. So the more we can relax, the better. So if, if you pressing, you're using your muscle, right? You're tensing your muscle. But if they're being drawn into the earth and you relax, let go, it's still falling and sinking into the earth, but you're not doing anything. You're just using your mind. You're more relaxed. The joints are more open. The joints will stretch. The muscles are more relaxed. The nerves are more relaxed. All the fluid, all the energy flows that much more because you've released that much more tension. Yeah. So starting from physical, right? Pressing and then releasing, and then only the internal muscles expanding and stretching, and still relaxing, and then being drawn. So the fingertips being pulled, just thinking the fingertips being pulled, and then the feet being sucked into the earth and relaxing. Yeah. So if you can, if you can, even if it doesn't make sense, just think of it, eventually it will make sense. <laughs> <laughs> just the process of thinking about it is going to change and you know, make you more relaxed, even more rooted, right? Because if you're being sucked into the earth and you're being pulled, then no resistance, right? So if you were like this, you'd be like Gumby. Everybody remember Gumby, right? You'd be like stretched and expanded in every direction, right? Anybody here had Gumby toy? I don't know why I thought about Gumby. I haven't thought about Gumby for probably 20 years. Yeah, like, oh, Gumby. 
<laughs> and that's what we did, right? Hey, hey, Ross, grab the feet. <laughs> grab the hands, right? We stretch Gumby. <laughs> ah. so, but it is a different feeling, right? So stretching, expanding, and then being pulled, then you can just relax everything and it'll stretch more. Pressing, expanding, and then being sucked into the earth. So if you can do that with the fingers and the palms and then the feet all at the same time, and then you can feel all the joints starting to release. They have to release and let go yeah, from there. So if you come here, if you're holding this palm, right, and you're thinking just the fingertips pulling, and you drop and just the fingertips pulling and you lift right about here, it gets really full. Right? You feel the difference? Right? So you come from here and you listen, you listen to your whole body. You come from here and you're coming out and right about here it gets really full. Everything connects. Right? And try that one more time. Right? Right? So you're coming down, and you're sinking. Right? You can try and flex over here, but nothing happens. And drop and tilt, and right about here, you can feel everything starting to connect. Yeah. Right when you feel everything starting con to connect, from here, there's, there's no reason to extend out here. Okay? Before you feel everything connect, there's no reason to flex this muscle. You can flex this muscle as much as you want. And then nothing translates. But right about here, it's like, oh, everything gets full and connects. Right? So right where it gets full and connects, you can issue a little bit more, and then that's enough. There's so much power ready from there. Yeah? So you listen for that full feeling, that full, full feeling. Okay, where are we? Oh, okay. okay. So, yeah, just reset everything. Yeah, reset everything. Okay, we're going to have tests, you know. <laughs> no, no tests. So you focus on whatever one you can think of, right? You can just focus on that. And like, and so if you're only focusing on the fingertips or you're only focusing trying to pull the legs down or you're only focusing before that on just pressing, getting that pressing and internal and loosening the joints, what, whatever it is, or getting everything to move at one time, whatever it is, yeah. So everybody's different. That's why I always tell you, go at your own pace, go at your own speed, listen to your body, right? Don't, don't have to copy me exact, exactly. I'm just kind of a guideline. So one thing our teacher said was, was true. And then it's, um, as an educator, that's what you want. And as you teach people, he said, you know, if I train 40 years before you, I always have 40 years of experience, right? But... I want you to surpass me. You can surpass me at the same point of time. So in your own timeline at 40 years, I want you to be better than I was when I was trained for 40 years. But if you're trying to be like me, my skill now, I have 40 years more experience than you. You copy everything I do. You don't know everything I have, right? <laughs> it's like, wow, you copied everything in class. Bah! Where did that come from? I have 40 years. <laughs> I train with more people. I have more experience. Right? You copy everything I do, I'm going to pull out a new trick. But 40 years from now, I want you to be better than I was today. So, right, teacher, instructors, diagrams, we're we only guidelines. Right? You got to figure out how it got there. Okay. Okay, sit up nice and straight, expand, loosen up all the joints, smile while relaxing all the facial muscles, sun in the chest, expanding, warm and cool, feeling the fingertips starting to be pulled and stretched out. Take a deep breath and let it all out and breathe normally. And then begin breathing in, extending, reaching, just feeling the fingertips being pulled. And exhale, and listen to the body right about here. Everything feels full. 
and then come down. Keeping the legs expanded into the earth. When you think of the, of the feet, try to think of them being pulled into the earth, sucked into the earth. Like there's a big vacuum hose pulling and drawing the feet down. Think of the fingertips, think of the fingertips being pulled and stretched outwards. Make sure you open the throat and relax and breathe. Just let the head fall, let it pull on the spine. Okay, number two, hands out, one hand up, one hand down, yeah, fold, height of the face, same thing, fingertips are being pulled and stretched upwards or downwards, whatever direction the fingertips are lined up with, pointing at. The eyes should be looking at the palm first. And then the second stage, as you look at the second finger, make sure both hands are moving. The hand that's falling, let it fall all the way down. Just let it drop to the side. And the third stage, you look in between the thumb and the forefinger, stare out at the horizon or stare out at the mountain top. And just let the lower hand fall on the side of on the side of your knee. And let the lower hand fall all the way on the side of your knee. Just let it go. Okay, come back to center. Height of throat. Stretching the fingertips. And down. Right? The fingertips are still expanded throughout the whole movement. Right? Don't let the fingertips go. Turn the palms, fold the elbows, squeeze up and over, and breathe, and I feel the fingertips still stretching, expanding the palm, feel the legs still sinking or being pulled into the earth. Come forward. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the palms stretched. Keep the fingertips stretched. One more time. Pull the shoulders muscles down. And then squeeze. Listen to the inside of the shoulder, the shoulder blades all the way down. Release and do one side, keep the palm open. If you're trying to focus on the feet being pulled or pressed into the earth or the fingertips being stretched or listening to, while well, listening to jazz under the shoulder blade, hard to tense up other parts of your body. Come forward when you're done. Open the shoulder blade. Pull and stretch. Relax and do the other side. Yeah, keep the fingertips stretched. Yeah. Keep the palms expanded. Come forward after three times.
Oh, this Sunday Mother's Day, yeah? Oh. <laughs> And I see all the ads, it doesn't hit me, yeah, the two sides, it doesn't hit me that it's so soon. And then I realize, oh my God, Saturday is my girlfriend's birthday. Oh. Yeah, somebody said, oh, so what are you going to do for your mother for Mother's Day? I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> ah. Oh. <laughs> Everybody else running around scrambling. I'm still in, like, huh? <laughs> yeah, swing, swing, loose. Yeah, loose. Okay, slow it down. Yeah. Yeah, so her kids are planning it. I'm just totally staying out, like, not going to say a word. Should we order out? I'm just silent. In other words, yes. <laughs> Breathe in and out. Yeah, feel the fingertips pulling or being pulled. Feel the feet being sucked into the earth. And relax all the joints in between. And the shoulders are light, the elbows are light, the wrist, ankles, knees, hips are light. The body can turn. And the fingertips are being pulled and stretched out. The feet are being sucked into the earth. Right, that little sun in the chest is expanding, warm and cool. And that feeling, think of that feeling of smiling. And relax the face, relax all the facial muscles. Breathe in and let everything go. But keep the fingertips expanded. Okay? So if you're holding this, right, that's, oh, that's at least 10 minutes so far. And when do you hold a stretch for 10 minutes, right? So if you think, oh, I'm just going to stretch my palm, it's like, are we done yet? And you look at the clock and it's 10 seconds. <laughs> oh, are we done yet? And you look at the clock, oh my God, it's only 30 seconds. But if you can hold this while you're doing something, right? If you can hold that leg stretch while you're doing something, you know, you may not hold it 100%, but that's a long time. So if we want to relieve the pain from the arthritis, right? One of the things we need to do is get the joints to loosen, get the joints to expand, and we have to have motion, right? right? It's not just that, but that's definitely, if we don't, if we stop the movement, then that inflammation and the calcification is just going to lock that joint, right? So if you're constantly stretching and pulling, right, that expansion, and you're relaxing, then the blood can flow, right? If you're pulling, then you're trying to, if it's crooked like this, by being pulled this way and relaxing, it's, um, oh, like, like if you had something that's bent, right? And you're trying to straighten it out, so you anchor one end and the other, and you just start pulling gently. And as it lets go, right, it starts straightening, right? All those little bends start straightening, right? So you create space in there. So if you create space, right, it's, it's going to feel different from there. So you start becoming aware of just stretching, right? So no longer just stretching, right? That's one. But then stretching and then changing it off, being pulled, and then that'll let go of that stretch, right? So it seems like a real subtle exercise, but how many years did it take for that arthritis to build up and you started to notice the pain, yeah? So this, this is just one thing that will help to counter that in there. Like I know I have arthritis coming up and it flares and then it goes away so I forget about it and then one time it'll flare Right, and it might flare for a long time, or it might flare for a short time, but it says, ha, 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 I'm still there. <laughs> right? You want it to abuse your body or whatever it is, right? Yeah, so, yeah, you can see this finger, I abused my body when I was young. Yeah, 
now it's not correctable. Well, without surgery, it's not correctable. <laughs> I only notice it when I look and go, oh yeah, it's crooked. Oh. Like, and then the whole incident comes back like. <laughs> okay. All right. So hold the ball. Right. So now we keep that stretch, but start start stretching the rib cage and the spine. So, so this is the one where we really want to plug those cables into the earth and plug those cables into the sky and let them pull on the fingertips and relax the wrist and let that expansion come out and just let, it, let that expansion reach the spine, the hips, the rib cage. Open the throat. Open the throat so the air flows down into the lower belly. Take a deep breath and hold that expansion throughout the whole movement. Hold that expansion as the bottom hand is turning into the earth. Drop the shoulders, loosen up the hip and every vertebrae. Yeah, let the other hand go down. Yeah, yeah plugged into the earth. Yeah. Breathe in and out. Slowly keeping those fingertips expanded, keeping the legs sinking and being pulled into the earth. Breathing in and out. Taking your time, just really focusing on the bottom of the feet and the fingertips. Feeling everything else in between. Relax and stretch and fall back into place. Breathing in. And out. Right where the palms pass in front of the heart, you start breathing in. Good. We move to a spiral, so turn your waist and turn the palm and drop the elbow. And then wash the outside. So breathe in, lift. And fall. So even here, stretch the palms, stretch the fingers, make them large. And exhale. And then breathe in. And exhale. And then breathe in. Turn the body as much as you can. And exhale. And breathe in. And exhale. Drop the elbow. Tuck the elbow in. Turn the body, turn the waist, turn the spine. Imagine you're pulling the spine. And exhale, and letting go, and then you're pulling the spine again. And last one, exhale. Come back to center in front of the heart. Yes, sternum tilts up, breathing in and out. Okay, and out. Bring the feet back in. Yeah. So you don't have to stretch 100% all the time, but you want to feel that stretch. So even, even when you're doing extreme stretching, there's still that breathing. And you can still feel it like a little bit more and then a little bit less, but it holds you. Yeah? That's it moving. Okay, so as we come up, Right? It's going to change a little bit, but you still want it out. But now you, it's like you're palming a ball, right? You're like, like you're palming something rounded. And so as you come up, relax the shoulder, relax all the joints, and like you're pulling. Like your palms are sucking something up, pulling, drawing something up. And then drop your shoulders and elbows, and it's gently guiding it down. The fingertips are still stretched, but the palm is a little bit rounded. And at the bottom, right now, they're being pulled and sucked into the earth. Yeah. So try that again. Relax the shoulders, relax all the joints. Breathing in and out. You let everything go, but the palms are still expanded. Third time, breathe in. Shoulders, elbows, wrist. Palms, fingers. Press both feet into the earth. Being 
cooled and sucked into the earth and sink into one hip. So as you sink into one hip joint, the foot is being sucked into the earth and the other leg can release. Stepping forward. Focus more on the feet, on the hip joint. Pick up the knee as high as you comfortably can. Relax the bottom of the feet. And this is like being an Olympic athlete, right? If you want to, if you want to be Olympic world-class athlete, there's probably thousands of things you're training. You cannot train them one time, but if you ask, wow, what did you have to do to win that race or achieve that goal? Well, you have 10 years to listen to all my training. <laughs> right? Because it was 10 years, every, I'm going to pack it into 10 years and every minute was something new I had to do and refine and change. Yeah. Right, so if, if you have a competitor and both of you start off the same, but that competitor gets to go to the Olympic training centers and be hooked up every day to wires and computers and doctors and the best trainers in the world right, and dietitians, right, and they get to train with the best equipment and the best, even the clothes, right, even the materials. Oh, hard to beat that person, right? Because now they have they have that advantage. Right? They, they might have psychologists, right? Sports psychologists. They're going to analyze everything. You ever watch The Last Emperor, the Chinese one, right? And the and when the when the boy was young. Somewhere right in the beginning of, of the movie, right? He's e so somewhere he's eating and the eunuchs are analyzing his poop, right? Oh, we have to adjust his diet because look at the poop. <laughs> I, I'm sure at the Olympic training center at that level there, every so often they got to give samples and they're analyzing, not just for drug testing, but it's like, oh, right? Yeah, your diet is off. Right? Ah. Okay, come back to center. Breathe in and out. Okay, so this one you leave the palms open instead of making a fist. You want to keep those fingers stretched. So pick up. The bottom foot is sinking, and being sucked into the ground. Press the heel, push the knee down, and then lift. And switch. Breathing in and out, your heel, press the knee down, stretch the back of the leg, and then lift. And this time we're going to add the foot pump. So heel first, press the knee, and then pump the toe, and then lift. Heel, press the knee down, pump the toe, and then lift. Right, so we're really emphasizing stretching and opening all the joints. This time we add the waist turn. So turn and then come back. And you try to keep the upper body as upright and relaxed as possible. One more time with all those movements. Bottom of the foot is relaxed. Try to point the finger straight, stretch the finger, yeah. And then come back and hold the ball. And relax the hips, yes, for a few breaths. Okay, and then ankle. So keep the hands right at heart level, right? Remind yourself heart, heart is number one, relaxing is number one, sun in the chest, right? Smiling. And just taking your time, other side. So no matter what the movement is, right? 
the relaxing is the same, being uh, pulled out into to another direction is the same, holding the upper body is the same, smiling is the same. Okay. So every form is just an opportunity to practice that in a different environment, different situation. So it's like self-defense. Why you practice 20,000 moves? Oh, in a fight, that's ridiculous. You got to have basically one move, end the fight. Yeah, but what if there's 20,000 attackers and they all attack you in a different move, in a different environment, right? <laughs> if you only learn one move and they don't come that way, oh, you're in trouble. Right? Okay, now let that's why when you read the comments, everybody thinks like that. Oh, that doesn't work. Why you train that? Because <laughs> you just don't know, right? But we train 20,000 ways and a situation arises. Oh, I've seen that before, right? Uh, uh, less shock, right? less surprise. Or oh, you don't hold the shock as long. <laughs> Sometimes I'm so focused and my girlfriend walks in. I don't hear her and I see her. So I see her first, and then there's the de de delayed, like, you know, like I saw a ghost, right? <laughs> Even though I saw her first. It's really interesting. This happens so often. Yeah, like she snuck up on me. And she does. I'm at my computer, carpet house. And she's light, right? She doesn't creak the boards. And I turn around, and she's like, <laughs> like, Say something. <laughs> okay, listen, all that up, shake all that up. Okay, so if you were holding your fingers and you were pressing your feet down, that's almost half an hour. Continuous, yeah? So loosen up your hand, right? You gotta shake that out now, right? The squeeze, let that go, and then light, loosen it up. Yeah? Okay, and then stretch it out. Hold it a little bit, relax, shake it out. Right? and then stretch it out yeah. okay and then you listen to your hand oh I might be tired from stretching that much but is it different yeah. and actually it's good if it's tired because that means the muscles are letting go but you have this stretch now so after that can you just can you make your palm straight and flat right like it's like like this, this kind of flat, like it would be flat against the wall. Okay. You try to hold it like this. Does that feel relaxed? Look how straight everybody's hand is. But if I told you to do that at the beginning of class, everybody would be like, cannot, right? But now because you had that big stretch to go here, right? This is really zero, right? This is really baseline, not here, right? This is baseline. It's like, wow, this is so easy now. So can you imagine, Ross, you go to class and you practice slapping now, and this is baseline, relax, and be like, <laughs> what happened? Oh, I don't know, I'm just stretching my hand. <laughs> so anything you do now, right, this muscle, you've allowed that stretch, that's a myofascial stretch. Myofascial stretch is applying a stretch on the fascia and holding that stretch. And they say it in the manuals, in the theory, although they don't emphasize it, but you're running energy through the muscle at the same time. Yeah. I think they don't, they don't come out and say, oh, myofascial stretch is running energy through because then that turns it into energy work. And I think I, I have a suspicion that the guys at the top don't want to go into that area. But when you read it, they'll say, Oh, you want to stretch this muscle? Put one hand here, put the other palm here, and then apply a little stretch, right? And just wait. And you know why you're stretching? The energy is running between your palms. And like, what? Wait, what did they say? <laughs> it's energy work, right? You got to run energy between the two palms. But they kind of hide it in there. It's hidden in plain, plain view. So when we're doing this, Right, and we're doing the qigong, we're running energy, we're running blood while we're applying the stretch. So that's myofascial massage. So to me, this is myofascial self-massage, right? Everything we're doing here. Okay. Okay. All right. 
So as we do the set, same thing, right? Really overemphasize this stretch and try to think of the feet being sucked into the earth. Okay? And as much as you can remember, smile, put that energy out. Um, this, this movement here, that flushing, that feeling, and that healing movement. That healing movement, right? Cleaning, wiping, collecting, letting it go. So this hand has to fall now, right? If you're doing a flushing movement, right? Don't stop here, right? You gotta let it go all the way down. Yeah, just let it fall all the way down. So if you're healing yourself, right? You're opening up your channels, okay? Right? Wiping it and letting it go, right? If you Healing, if you're healing another person in application, oh, where's, he comes back. But basically, this move is a block, right? So if, if um, you imagine like if you're punching me for, or you're reaching for me from here, my hand's going to come inside and guide you outside, right? So if it's soft, you imagine my, oh, I don't know how to do this. You imagine my hand kind of like wiping Wiping the inside of your hand, right? You're coming this way, this hand is going to wipe the inside. So you're coming up over here, right? You're listening to the heart already, right? And then, oh, oh, there he is, Roscoe. <laughs> no, it's nothing bad. <laughs> yes, it kind of fits this, uh, fits this angle. Okay, so if Ross is reaching for me this way, Right, so, so the movement is repulse monkey, brush knee, right? So if, if no partner, right, this hand is flushing my right hand down, throwing it away, right? So don't hold it here, just let it go, okay? But if partner is coming up already listening to the heart, right? So already projecting, listening to the heart and taking all that gunk, yeah, and wiping it out, Right? Gathering it here, throwing it away, right? And then listening to the heart again, right? And then palming, right? And then projecting heart energy. And in the standing, there's a follow through. There's a step up right? from there. So exact same mechanical movement can either be self-defense or can be healing. The exact same mechanical movement still comes from the heart. So if it's self-defense, but I'm laughing, there's no resistance, right? <laughs> right? If I'm coming up and like, oh, this is so much fun. <laughs> it's just going to explode out, right? If he gives resistance, that's where the damage is going to come from. If he doesn't give resistance and he laughs back, then there's no resistance, right? So the person might fly back from that explosion of energy, but there's no resistance, there's no damage, there's healing coming up. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So when you see this hand coming down, right? It's a flushing movement. Think of it, right? You're flushing down, out through the elbow, right? And then let it go. Don't hold on to it here. That's what we do, right? We have that stress, we gather that stress, and then I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you walk out of the house and you look at somebody, can you whack me as hard as you can on the back because it's stuck, yeah? So, flushing, letting go, right? And then it's clear now, so now that heart energy can come out, right? You've cleared that channel, so now the heart energy can flow out, right? So even without a partner, that heart energy flows out. But with a partner, Right? You could be flushing that person. You could be listening for that person and flushing and helping it come down, gathering it from here, wiping it down, letting it go. Now it's open again. And now you, you connect your heart energy to their heart energy yeah? and just let it go from here. So young style, young style, we would come here and I would let the palm go, right? Just let that energy roll out. Soon style, it comes here and it ends here, but you have to relax the wrist to let it go. Yeah. This has different purpose because soon, the Sun style set, when you study it, it holds the stretch. 
Okay, almost 100% of the set from beginning to end, it's holding the stretch. Yeah. But you still got to let it go. Okay. So remember, everything is heart, right? Heart number one, relaxing number one. So, all right. So everything I said, forget it. And then it'll be okay. <laughs> Hands up. Yeah, I got to find that scene and play it for you one day. All right. Oh, I can't remember everything. Okay, now you're ready to fight. <laughs> Okay, start to gather the chi between the palms, start to open, expand, feel the fingertips being pulled and stretched, feel the feet being sucked into the earth, release all the tension in the face while you're smiling and gathering that energy and cultivating that energy in your heart, feel that connection from the sun down through the top of your head down into that little sun in your chest. Take a deep breath. Look straight ahead. Exhale, breathe naturally. And then begin breathing in. Slowly waking up the chi. Bring it to the heart. Feel that smile inside of your chest waking up. Number two, rolling. Coming out and down into the body. Warming up all the organs. And out and back. Single whip, turn to your right. Yeah, turn and press and then open, raise the palm side of the face. Look at the left hand. One saw, keep on turning while the right hand drops. And the hands exchange while you're turning. Feel the fingertips being pulled and stretched up into the sky. We look at the palm first. And then you look at the second finger. And then you look in between the palm and the, the thumb. Stare out at the horizon. Stare out at the mountain top. Just extend your vision so the chi pulls out through your eyes. Come back to center. Open and close. Turn to your left. Repeat. Press and open. Raise the palms. Look at your right hand. Left hand starts to fall from single whip to one saw. Fingertips being pulled and stretched. The feet pressing into the earth, but being sucked into the earth. Look at the second finger. In between the finger and the thumb at the horizon, the mountain top. Top of the head is open, throat is relaxed. Yeah. Come back to center. Open and close. Brushing the knee, right side first. Turn to your right, slide the hand up right by the ear. Then drop the palm. Remember, feel the, feel the center of the chest and then palm, expand the heart energy. Keep on turning, palm center, and turn 45 to your right, left hand rises, turn your waist, twist to the left, hold the ball. Parry right and parry left. And let the palm flush the other arm. Yeah, vibrate. You can still vibrate the palm and the fingers even though they're expanded. Cover. Left hand under the right, outside of the knee. Breathe in and grab. Exhale. Squeeze the fist. Push the right fist out through the throat. And then release. Rolling back. Gather. Compress. Lift the sternum. 
Release, come back to the heart, right? Polishing the heart, heart energy. You repeat on the left side, brushing the knee. Breathe in and out. The right hand flushes all that energy down. The left palm projects that heart energy. Keep on turning. Turn 45 to the left, right hand sliding up, rising. Twist to, to the right. Left hand scoops under the elbow. In Bagua, they would call that hiding flower. Hiding flower on the leaf. Feel that vibration come out. Flip the hand over, like flipping over a pancake. Under the left, wrist on wrist. Breathe in and grab. Exhale, squeeze the fist, let the left hand rise. Center, rolling back. Gather, lift, pull it back, breathe in, and out. Repeat on the right side. Breathe in, and out. Leisurely tying the coat. So turn, the left hand circles up, turn back to the front, palms flat. Drop the elbows, wipe down in the center. Come to the belly button, drop the elbows. Scoop the left palm up and lift right under the chin. Tuck the elbows in. Turn the body to the right and push the palm out. In big spiral, loosen up the spine. Come to the heart, double palm, release. Breathe in and out. And then repeat on the left side, turn, breathe in, and out. Lift the sternum, leisurely tie the coat, fold. Right hand circles up, turn to center, drop the elbows, wipe down, in towards the belly button. Right palm circles, lift, tuck the elbows, turn the body. Big spiral, loosen the spine, tailbone all the way up to the neck. Come to the heart, double palm, release. Okay. Fist on the elbow, turn to your right, press, and then open, drop your right hand. Turn your waist, right hand grabs a fist, right on the bottom, turn back. Left elbow over the fist. Yeah, turn the body, breathe in. As you exhale, turn and push the fist out, squeeze the fist and then release, let it rise and then fold and turn your waist to the right. right. Repulse monkey, flushing. Tap the heart, listen. Expand from your heart. Keep on turning, flushing. Listen, tap the heart. Project from your heart out through your palm. One more time, keep on turning, washing down. Exhale, listen, All right, expand from the heart. Leisurely tie the coat, left hand circles up, turn the waist, turn back, wipe down, drop the elbows, lift, project, spiral, heart, double palm. And then, yeah, so turn the palm. Yeah, drop the <laughs> Okay, oh, wait, see, I lost track. This way. <laughs> Open, drop the left hand, and then turn the waist. So the left hand is on the bottom in the center. The left hand starts to grab a fist, and you turn back, turn the fist up and down. Right, adjust the body, breathe in. Exhale, squeeze the fist and then release. Repulse monkey. Okay, listen to the heart right in the center and then project from your heart out through your palm where your right hand lets go. Keep on turning. The right hand flushes down, washing. Breathing in. The right fingertip listens. And you lift and project from your heart out through the palm and then keep on turning. Ah. 
leisurely tying the coat fold right hand circles up center wipe come into the belly button drop and lift project turn the waist and big spiral heart release open and close turn the palms lift breathe in stare way out to the mountain top press one leg into the earth sink into that hip so the other leg can release press that leg into the earth sink into the hip so the other leg can release bring the hands up breathe in and out okay loosen everything up is it only 10 not even 10 15 is that right oh okay oh i know why we didn't do any standing yet <laughs> singing how did we how did we do that okay so yeah come and stand for a little while shake the legs out lift the legs up yeah. gentle compression okay. so So if, if you go a little wider stance, yeah, and you relax, and you slowly pick up, pick up the heels, right? If you can, right? They don't have to be real high, but you have to relax and just pick up. So my height doesn't change, right? If I pick up the, my heels, I'm not rising. I'm just letting everything fold and collapse. So if you pick up the heels, then you could imagine your toes like your fingertips surging forward right? but if your feet are flat right then that would just pull you that way right <laughs> not into the earth so your feet are flat then you think of the whole bottom of your foot just relax and just imagine there's a you're standing on a huge vacuum right and you're just standing there and you relax and you just feel the feet being pulled 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 sucked into the earth but if you pick up the heels then you can start imagining your toes surging forward. It's still going to have a little bend. Right? They don't have to be straight, right? You don't want to be stiff like that. You're just going to fold up. But then you can imagine your, your toes starting to be stretching and then being pulled. Then the toes can be pulled into the earth from there. It's a different feeling. These are real subtle little changes but they're really important yeah, from there. Okay. So, if your feet are close together, then the hips don't open, right? So if you go, if, so you have to go a little wider, right? And let the feet point out. And then when you relax, lift and relax, and then let the toes surge, then you feel the stretch starting to come up. You relax over here and let this stretch and expansion. Yeah. So opening up the hips is really important from there. So if you can hold this for half an hour, wow, the muscles could stretch. I can't do that for half an hour. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's not that big full stretch and everything. You just want to stretch in here, just take a wider stance, relax, and then lift the heels, and then let the toes. Yeah, it's funny if you don't have to focus on pushing this out, you can, but if you lift the heels and imagine your toes being pulled out, right? they start to press, but they're being pulled out. You can feel that stretch start to translate to here, yeah? but it's more relaxed. Yeah. If you have to do the kind of training where you got to push this out, well, you got to do that kind of training. But if you don't have to do that kind of training, right, you make it softer, just, just lift and just, just balance. Right? My upper body, I'm not worried about being like this. Right? Just relax. And just imagine the toes being pulled and stretched into the earth. Yeah? And then I can feel this stretch. Right? And then I can still rock back and forth. Yeah, I can still rock back and forth from here while holding that. So there's a whole thing. I can't remember. Have, have I showed you this one before? Okay. So 
This will stretch the psoas, right? Because you're going to stick these muscles and you're going to arch back a little bit and then it's going to release and come forward and a little bit so you have this rocking going on. And your weight is more in the front, the toes out. And you just drag the hands up. And you arch a little bit and then down. Yeah, let the body sink. And breathe in and then ha. Huh. You come up, you're dragging the arms out, like picking up water and pouring it down. Yeah. Just a little bit. Maybe yeah. keep it safe for you. But just a slow, gentle stretch. So my feet are falling up and down. When I come down, my heels just kind of touch. And then when I come up, I let them expand a little bit more. Yeah. So when I come up, I don't tilt my head up. Right? I keep looking straight ahead, but as my body arches, I'm going to look up a little bit naturally because my body is arching up. So come up, let the hips open and stretch, and then release. And then open and stretch, and release. One more time. And relax. Yeah. And then just shake it out. Yeah. So this is the move. This is, these are the moves like that um, balloon guy at the car, at the auto dealerships, right? They just right, coming out and stretching and then they let go yeah, from there. Okay. All right. So let's, um, oh, let's turn. Let's walk sideways. We haven't done walking for a long time. Um, so the follow step is, the follow step is just a shuffle. Yeah? So if you walk, if you take a small step, even if I shift my, my weight, I don't really feel my back leg pulling too much, right? Just a little bit. But if I take a bigger step, and then I shift my weight right over here. I can feel my, my waist wanting to pull the back leg with me. Right? So if I resist that, if I leave that leg there, I resist that. I have this tension here, right? So the follow step is just a shuffle, releasing the back leg and letting it come up and releasing that energy. So you take a step and you shift your weight, right? You feel it pull, the heel's going to come up, just let it go and just release that tension. So when you release that tension, you should end up, um, it's not an exact, but the heel, the heel and the toe, it's somewhere around here. Yeah. So they, they just kind of overlap. If it's a little behind, that's okay. In some of the movements, a little behind the heel is okay. But you're gonna feel, if you really release that tension, it'll just it'll overlap, the toe and the heel will overlap a little bit. So you put your, you rest your hands by your belly button or below the belly button, right? And then you're gonna squat and then you're gonna shift to one leg. Again, sink into the hip joint. So the other leg releases. You pick up and extend, put the heel down and sink and then shift to that front leg and turn your waist to that front leg. The back heel, allow it to, allow the back heel to peel off the ground. And as you pick up the back leg, let it shuffle forward. That's the follow step. Okay. And then you can just pick it up again, or we can... Um, oh, okay, so what we'll do is we'll just continue walking. Um, here, you know, face, face front, so just, to, just to show it so everybody can see. Right, so, so, so I'll shift to one side, right? Release that leg, I'm gonna step. I'm going to turn that leg, let this leg press, and let this leg release, let it shuffle, right? And then the heel down, and then I'm going to sink, key stay on this leg so I can step up, and then I'm going to shift, sink, and turn, and as I turn, that heel is going to release, and then I pick it off the ground, I let it follow. That's the follow step, 
and then um, stay on this link. Yeah, and then we just keep walking. Yeah, we just keep walking. You have to really think because my mind goes into different movements. <laughs> okay, so if we, oh, either way, either way, yeah. if you stand on the side of your chair, yeah, yeah, either way. So, yeah, me, yeah, just walk forward, just walk forward. I'm the one running out of room. <laughs> yeah. So I'll face, I'll face you. But yeah, either leg, yeah. So, so shift, yeah. If you want to do that, if you want to, just kind of keep shuffling that chair in front of you. You can do that, yeah. So, so stepping, sinking, that leg pressing, being sucked into the earth, yeah. Find the ground and then sink, and then shift. Drop that weight down and then turn a little bit. When you turn, that back heel should come up. Yeah. And just extend from the knee so the heel comes down first in, in this stepping. Sink. Shift and turn so the back heel will come up. Let it shuffle up. And then pick it up and finish the step. So it's like doing a half step and then a full step. Shuffle. Let the heel rest and then a full step and then shift follow step or shuffle and then the full step yeah. and then just keep on going take your time just take your time yeah just take your time as, as much room as you can if you want to walk side you can walk side right or wherever wherever gives you the most room yeah and then if you're sitting If you're sitting, just practice it by pressing down on one leg, right? Releasing the other leg right? and coming down and then pressing that leg and then sinking into the hip to see, see if you can find that release, right? So pressing and then sinking into the hip and see if that other leg releases, see if you can feel that, yeah? And then the upper body, relaxed upper body, right? Don't pull, you want to avoid pulling from here, you just think real deep into the hip joint when you pick up the leg and just you have to live right in that hip joint yeah like that like that and you gotta really focus into that hip joint and that will t that will prevent you from using your upper body to, to to do this yeah my joke is no matter how much you lift your shoulder it's not gonna pick up your leg <laughs> so that's you're we're, we're wasting energy yeah that you can use for something else yeah Okay, so if you want deeper training, right, just more intensive, then you go a little wider, you go a little longer step. But if your knees are hurting, that's counterproductive. Okay? If you're not folding into here, let this fold, right? Especially if you want to go deep, yeah, let, you gotta let, let the butt stick out. Right, and then from here, where's the weight? Is the weight on the heels or the toes? Just kind of rock the whole body until it's centered, right? And I'd rather you look like this, right? Then look like this, but actually you're screwing up your knees. <laughs> yeah. So the reason I'm looking down, right? Oh, let me let me try and get it as. As straight as possible okay I'm looking down but I'm keeping from my tailbone to my head aligned right? it's not doing this it's not doing this it's unfolding from here right so my upper body is angling so naturally I'm looking looking down okay? but I'm not dropping my head yeah yeah from here right shuffle and keep the weight here, step. Yeah, and you can feel when you step, you have to open up a little bit. Yeah. But study, study what's going on in the hip joint. Right? Yeah. So that press, and then let the, let the foot be sucked into the earth. Right? So everything relaxes, and then sink into that hip joint. That releases. Let it down, and then shift. And you're going to feel the foot press. And then sink into the hip joint. When I sink into the hip joint, I naturally turn. 
the back leg releases, let it shuffle, and then full step. Yeah, then relax, sink. You're gonna feel the foot press first, and then relax the bottom of the foot and sink into the hip joint. Let the body turn, shuffle, and then step. Yeah, and you keep on going. Yeah. So step, step, step. Yeah. So in in this drill, right? In this drill, it's like a half step and then the full step, right? Because we're studying, we're studying that shuffle step, that follow, but they, they'll say follow step. Yeah, it was odd to me when I first heard it because for us, it was always shuffle, shuffle. And I realized that's all it is, it's just a shuffle, yeah? Yeah, but yeah, it is, it's a follow step. Yeah. <laughs> it's whatever you want to call it <laughs> that makes sense to you. Okay, listen, listen up. When, when you do the standing, then you do this, pick the knee up to you. So same thing, right? When you pick up this leg, to pick up this leg, you have to relax and sink here. So relax and sink here, right? And the leg will come up. And then this hand just drops. It's just a compression. So it'll just bounce, yeah. Yeah, just letting it bounce. Relax. It's just compression. All right, let's close up class. Sorry, we'll, we'll get we'll get back to the standing form later. Yeah, yeah, I can sit. Down. Oh, I should have picked my pakalana for you guys. You know, I picked the pakalana, throw it in the bucket, and right, whatever's on on the hedge. It's so, so sad, you know, make that one or two lays. So I made one lay for my granddaughter and then the, um, the other daughter-in-law said, hey, can I come and pick? And they actually got two strands out of it when they sent me the picture. And right now, there's, I don't have any lays to make, so just sitting on the hedge, right? But I know, I know the people who walk by, certain people, oh, they love, they love it. Because they've told me that in the past, like, I don't know where it is, but I can smell it. I, oh, I can smell the pakalana. I said, it's all hiding in my makro and chitch. <laughs> and this year, it's the side. It's really weird. They either bloom all the, on one half or it blooms on the other half, right? For whatever reason, the vine, which direction the vine decides to go. I think there's two mother plants on the bottom. This year, it's all by the sidewalk. Yeah. My granddaughter, I don't know if I told you, I made the first lay, right? First lay of season, I gave it to her. I think, you know, I hope she wears it. She, she liked it last year. Caught her before she went to school, put it on, took some pictures. And then she took it off, put it back into the container, gave it to the dad. Can you put it in the refrigerator? Just made it. And I'm thinking like, ah. <laughs> oh, but at least she wore it. <laughs> then they're not going to remember right by the time they come home. <laughs> All right, hands off. Yeah, but I think Pakalana. Pakalana is my favorite flower. Yeah, I just love that flower. It's a lot of memories for me. Yeah. It's the it's the graduation flower. Okay. Ah. You rest your hands on your lap. Extend your legs, but relax. Sun in the chest, warm and cool, smiling, relaxing all the facial muscles. Any distractions, acknowledge them, and then bring yourself back to your meditation.
Okay, slowly open your eyes, rub your hands together. Yeah, loosen everything up. Warm up your eyes. Just imagine your eyes bright and sparkling when you're warming up your eyes. And brush your hair back with your fingertips, center to outside, front to back, three times. And then tapping. In the back of the neck. And then pulling those muscles. Sometimes, you know, we do these exercises, these extreme, these stretching. If it feels tired and sore, when you go home or you have an opportunity, to cool it down. Yeah. Just a little cool water or ice pack. Doesn't have to be long. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, too much blood flowing, not good. There's inflammation, yeah? yeah. So you just cool it down. Not enough blood flowing, that's not good. That's stag stagnant. Yeah. Oh, so funny, Sunday, Sunday I had my camera on my computer and I knew it was a little off from watching and said, ah, oh, it's okay, right? And then I put it in my video editor and a little off looks like this. I'm like, oh, I can't post that. <laughs> oh, so I haven't put out the Sunday video yet. I just got so lazy this week on it. I just look at the video and oh, I don't want to work on it. I don't want to fix it. Okay. Hands up. Right hand, left hand. Thank you, everybody. Oh, be safe. Oh, it's, it's, I didn't realize it was going to be this wet today.